Welcome to the Paul Chandler Show, everyone. I'm your host, Paul Chandler. In today's episode, we're going to be using the CPT book, the Current Procedural Terminology book, and we'll be looking at bronchoscopies, and we'll be looking at the diagnostic side and the surgical side as well. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. We'll, today, we'll be coding bronchoscopies. Welcome back everyone. And today we're looking at how to code bronchoscopies because it's almost like all the, all the other scopes are done, but there's a little, couple of things though that are unique to only bronchoscopies. So like I said, bronchoscopy, bronchoscopy, bronchoscope, putting a scope down either the nose or through the mouth and going down through the trachea and to get to the bronchus. So then as far as the coding, the first code we're gonna look at is 31615. That being one of the parent codes. And then we have the next parent code, 31622. So now we look at in the CPT book at 31615. That one is unique because it's tracheobronchoscopy through established tracheostomy incision. So again, so breaking down that phrase, so we're doing a tracheobronchoscopy. So I'll do TB scope. So we're doing a scope through down the trachea and the bronchus, but the key thing is though, is through the established tracheostomy. I'm just kind of showing that there to get it all on the board. So T ostomy for the tracheostomy. So we're gonna code 31615. The patient already has a hole in their neck, essentially. They've already had previously done the tracheostomy, so it's a permanent hole in the trachea, which is fancy way of saying your neck. And then if the patient needs to have a scope go down the bronchus and they have a tracheostomy opening, then the provider will just put the scope through that opening in their neck and then down, instead of going through the nose or through the mouth, since they already have that opening there in the neck through the established tracheostomy. Most of the time though, you're not gonna be in that code. You'll be starting with parent code 31622. Starting with that code, bronchoscopy, rigid or flexible, so it doesn't matter if it's a rigid scope, rigid scopes, just so you know, short little scopes, not necessarily as thick as the marker cap is, but I'm trying to physically like bend this and um, I do go to the gym three times a week, I do work out, but yeah, I can't even bend, bend the sucker because that's what a rigid scope is. It's short, again, not as wide as a marker cap is, but it's non-bendable, so it's not flexible. Or we have then the flexible scope, which in that case, the provider, it has this kind of joysticky kind of little gadget that they'll you will generally cusp with their hands and then maybe like drive it with a little joystick kind of like with the finger or most like most likely their thumb and there's a nice little snake kind of cord or ethernet cable or power cable going out so when the doctor is driving it with their thumb then by a little joystick then that moves the scope left and right and whatnot so that's what a flexible scope is but as you can see with 31622 Bronchoscopy, rigid or flexible, because it doesn't matter, because some scope procedures, it doesn't matter. If it's a rigid, here's your code or codes. If it's flexible, here's your code or codes. But bronchoscopy doesn't matter. And then includes fluoroscopic guidance if performed. But then we have 31622 is the diagnostic scope. So let's put on a DX for diagnostic scope. But then we're looking at all of the kit codes. So we have 31623 how that's a kit code. And in the 2021 CPT book, I'm looking at the bottom right part of page 221. We have the code 31623, the first kit code that we have. It's all on page 222. Those are all kit codes. And same thing too for all of page 223. And we do have the add-on code at the top left of page 224. Now, that tells us that we have a whole freaking long list of kit codes here. 
because the 31623 all the way through the add on code 31654. Those are all kid codes, those are procedures that are being done. So we have the procedure codes, and actually I'm going to make this actually an S instead for a surgical scope. So I'll put the DX as in for a diagnostic scope, and I'll do SX for a surgical scope. And remember though, we do have the phrase, a diagnostic scope is always included in a surgical scope when performed. Or can I flip around a little bit and say a surgical scope always includes a diagnostic scope when performed, no matter how you want to phrase it. But now in the CPT book though, we have a long list of kit codes. And because we only have one parent code, what I like to do is when, uh, when we have a parent code in the CPT book and there's three or more kit codes, what I like to do is actually highlight the parent code number. And in this case, when I highlight my CPT book, I use a yellow highlighter when I'm highlighting like notes or guidelines, but I use an orange highlighter to highlight the parent code number. And I don't go to town and highlight the entire parent code number and the description of the CPT code that kind of defeats the purpose if you're highlighting too much. So I just take just the number itself and because I'm not going to go over in the orange here because I don't go over the black ink here, but I'll just put an orange box around instead for 31622 because in reality the my cpt book has the entire code highlighted in orange 31622 that just lets me know that let's say if i'm looking at my cpt book and let's say if i happen to be coding 31640 31640 excision of tumor i need to scroll back to see where that kid code in this case 31640 is linked with so I could take my time and make sure I'm going back each individual code, each individual kid code, until I see the parent code, 31622, or simply just highlighting the parent code, that to me is a stop sign. It can equivalent like that. When a uh, CPT code number is highlighted, now when I say stop sign, I mean you do a full stop, like zero miles an hour, not if, more like uh, I live in Orlando now, but I am from St. Louis, and not doing one of the famous St. Louis stops where you slow down to five miles an hour, then keep on going. Not that kind of stuff. So we have one parent code and all these kit of codes. And then going back to the normal phrase of a surgical scope always includes a denounce scope when performed. So remember in coding, the only time we're gonna code a 31622, that's all that the doctor does. Doctor does a, surg a doctor does a diagnostic scope, finds nothing wrong, no need to do a surgical scope, okay? We code it 31622 and that's it. But with the phrase though, and not to be like a broken record, but a surgical scope always includes a diagnostic scope when performed, that if the doctor, let's say the doctor does a diagnostic scope first, and let's say the documentation will show that the doctor did a 31622 first, and then after the doctor does the diagnostic scope, let's say then we'll stick with the 31640, where the doctor sees a tumor that they want to excise. So the doctor does all the work for the diagnostic scope, then does the 31640, puts in the surgical scope to excise out that tumor, and then retracts that scope back out. So we have two different tumors that went, I'm sorry, two different scopes that went in. But as far as coding it, we only code the, in this case, the surgical scope. We're only gonna input on the coding claim form 31640, because with that, the provider's not getting screwed out on doing the, having the reimbursement done for the diagnostic scope. So like I said, I mean, I'm just gonna plug in numbers here, but let's say that a 31640 pays, let's say $650. And just to pick a number. When we see that on the claim form for the reimbursements, that $650 is actually including the diagnostic scope portion of it also. So let's say the diagnostic scope portion is $200. And then the actual reimbursement for just the surgery scope part itself is let's say $450. So when we have the dollar amount for a surgical scope on the claim form, we're getting actually paid for the diagnostic side and the surgical side as well. It's just that it's bundled into one code because if not, then every single time a doctor did a diagnostic scope and a surgical scope, then the provider would do both, but then the coder has to put both codes on the claim form. Because that's one thing, no matter how you look at it, you can look at me, try to look between my suit and my shirt, and look through my skin and my, my, my rib cage, 
to look at my bronchus and unless you have superman vision in which case you probably have some really awesome glasses yeah you have to do a dinososcope first so doctors will do a dinososcope first and then the surgical scope but we're only going to code the surgical scope side of it so again so that's one thing so when we're coding bronchoscopies remembering that we have the parent code that we have two codes for parent codes 31615 stands by itself because that's when the provider is putting the scope through a tracheostomy through a hole in the neck that's already there or the more standard parent code 31622 the dinoxoscope and we have the long list of kit codes underneath it that are surgical scopes so again i highlighted the code number in orange 31622 and no matter what type of procedure that we're doing on the kit codes for the surgical side now one last thing to notate is that we do have again some add-on codes that we have here for example uh, we have 31632 which is an add-on code for 31631 if we i'm sorry uh, i'm sorry 31632 is an add-on code for 31628 and we do have a couple different add-on codes that involve additional lobes remember we have five lobes in our lungs provided we don't have any birth anomalies or we haven't had one taken out before we have two lobes on the left and three lobes on the right so that's the last thing to notate that when you're looking at how many lobes the doctor is going in see if there's an add-on code for that as well because we have the five possible lobes and again it's not two and a half two and a half two on the left and three on the right so that is how you code bronchoscopies dealing with the respiratory system from all the cast and crew here at the paul chandler show we do thank you for watching live long be good and prosper <laughs>